Hello, everyone, and welcome to D&D Night on DDO Stream, sponsored by Fantasy Grounds, uh, the most supported virtual tabletop with more official licenses than any other virtual tabletop. Visit them at fantasygrounds.com to learn more. This is D&D Night, uh, the Heroes of Battle Rise campaign. I'm Evil Beaker, your Dungeon Master host for this evening, and tonight we're going to continue our adventures in the Out of the Abyss uh, adventure uh, by uh, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. Hope everybody's uh, uh, home and well and safe. Uh, but uh, we quit last time. We uh, finished last time right in the middle of a big battle, and we're going to pick it up uh, right where we left off. But first, let us introduce... Uh, our players, and I'm going to go uh, left to right on my screen. First of all, the uh, party barbarian, that would be Utini. Say hello, Utini. Hey, this is Patrick playing Utini from DDOcast. Is Patrick from DDOcast or is Utini from DDOcast? Never, Patrick ne from DDOcast. Ne ne never mind. Uh, then we have our uh, resident paladin, Beavis Porkhammer. Say hello, Beavis. Hello, Beavis. And uh, we have our wonderful... Uh, eloquent bard calliope say hello calliope hi hello calliope played by even note and uh then we have our uh fighter cleric bearded dwarf eldeth say hello eldeth hello eldeth i do have an amazing beard she does thank you for pointing that out <laughs> and uh and then uh last uh we have uh jerry the cleric say hello jerry Hey everyone, Jerry the Cleric is uh, sort of a bureaucrat as much as anything, and he also is a bit of a scaredy cat, and he's also not entirely competent, but not entirely incompetent either. And uh, this is being played by someone who shares many of those same attributes by the name of Jerry as well, and Cordovan uh, on DDO. Hi everyone. Hello, Jerry. And uh, Drac is not with us tonight, and uh, we will deal with that shortly. <clears throat> so uh, if you guys remember, uh, when you left off last week, and I will share the map back out to you, uh, you were right in the middle of a fight with uh, three Alpha Gricks and three Shambling Mounds, and you had traveled to the Neverlight Never Light Grove, which is a region of the Underdark uh, that is populated by the intelligent uh, fungus uh, colonies, uh, most commonly known as uh, myconoids. Um, you were here, you were coming here to return uh, Rumpadump and Stool, uh, two uh, companions that you had picked up along the way. Uh, you were also traveling with uh, an intelligent. Um, gelatinous cube named G Glabagool, and uh, there's also Shushar, and I don't see him on the. Huh, I don't see him on my thing here. I will have to look Shushar for him. Was still... No, Sh I think Shushar was still with us, wasn't he? Oh no! Oh no! He went. He went with the other guy. He went with the king, right? I believe. Yes, him and Stool went with the, the king. So you guys got to the Neverlight Grove and you found that there was two kings that run the place. And Shushar and Stool went with the other king. That is correct. Okay. So, and then right at the end of round two of combat, um, uh, a body fell from a, a fungus ledge above and landed big kersplat like uh, I see the little blood stain there and uh, the the body lands and smashes down right in front of you and there's and there's uh, this fungus wriggling in and out of uh, of the of the it, it looks like a female drow and it looks like the the fungus is wriggling in and out of her brain and obviously she took a uh, Catast uh, a horrible, horrible fall uh, and, and is probably going to die within seconds, but she does look up right at you, Beavis, and she says, run, run, Ugh. and then she dies. Can I, 
Oh, can I do spare the dying on her quickly? You want to touch her with all this weird fungus growing around on her brain? I take it that's a no. I guess not. Okay. No, she. Those are those are literally her last words, and she and she dies. <clears throat> um. And. Uh, let me see. Where is? Doo -doo -doo. Um, my little cheat sheet here. Uh, so she came from a plateau that's above, and I'll read you the description. This plateau rises higher than the other terraces, screened by a natural fence of soaring zerkwood stalks. Muffled murmuring can be heard from atop of the, of the plateau. That's where she came from. Um, Do you think somebody else is going to fall from up there? No. But you don't have time to think about that because, uh, let's see. So Calliope, Jerry, and Eldeth, um, as that creature hits the ground there, you see Draculetta standing there and his staff suddenly shines very brightly and he disappears. <gasps> what? He's gone. Right in the middle of a fight? Right in the middle of a fight. Oh, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> that fiend. All right. So it is... Oh, so let me do this. Let me move this over just a little bit here. Now, and actually, we actually we weren't at quite the top of the third round. It was actually uh, Glabagool's turn at the bottom of the round there. So Glabagool is going to squeeze in between Calliope and Jerry and is going to come up uh, kind of like riding the water and the land. And he's going to come up there and he's going to help you guys out and face off against that Grick. So... It's going to be top of round three, and Grick number one is going to go, and he's going to step forward once there. And uh, let's let me take a look at the old Grick again here. Um, so it gets two attacks, one with a tail, and one with a tentacle. Uh, if it hits with the tentacles, then it can make an attack with its beak. Okay. So, uh, we got uh, Utini and Beavis up there. So, let's, um, one, two, Utini, three, four, uh, Beavis. Why am I not? There we go. All right, so Beavis, you are the lucky winner. So, you are going to get a, uh, which one? Okay, it's a tentacle. So tail attack first. Ooh, that's a 26. That's going to be a hit. No, oh, my armor class is 20. Doesn't it have to hit exactly? Hmm? <laughs> no. I thought your high armor class was higher than 20. Oh, I guess it's not. I must be thinking of a different character. Um, all right. So then damage is going to be some bludgeoning. Ooh. That was a good roll. Um, and then it gets its tentacle attack. And that'll be a miss. So that means it doesn't get a bite attack. All right. Uh, All right. It can make two bite attacks if it hits with its tentacles? No. It, no, it gets one bite attack if it hits with its tentacles. So, all right. So then we're going to move to Grick number two. And he's going to come up here over the dead body. And he's going to attack Grognard. And you, you know what? I don't have a, I don't have him linked. Where is the stats for your uh, goat? I'm not sure because I no longer can take control of him. Oh, wait. So... No, no. Uh, did it work? No, I think it worked. Um, hold on a second. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, you could just... You could just, yeah, drag on top of him and it works. No, but no, hang on, hang on. What I'm saying is I can't pull up his sheet. That worked? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have to give it to him because he's, he, there. there is no such thing as an NPC sheet. At least not yet that I know of. Um, 
Okay, so that was a hit. And then... He's oh. dead. Oh, he's not dead. He's not dead, but I do get a tentacle attack on him. He would just be dispelled, right? Yeah. Okay. And the tentacle attack is nasty. Yeah, that... Bleh. So Grognard, he just disappears, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, Grognard is toast. All right, so then it goes to Grick number three, and he sees Glabagool there, and he is going to take an attack, and that's going to hit Glabagool. And pretty minor damage. And then... Tentacle attack. Ooh, unfortunately, that is going to be a hit. And because of the tentacle attack, he gets the beak attack. Ooh, that's a 19. So Glabagool just took a ton of damage. He is still standing or oozing, as it were. <laughs> uh, and Jerry, you are up next. Okay, to start off, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. Uh, let me get my little spiritual guy out of here. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Okay. Uh, where did you want it to appear? Uh, how about over by Grick Alpha 3? Okay, the one by Glab Glabagol? Yeah. Okay. All right, and you get an immediate attack with it? Yep. That is, okay, that is a miss. All right. Um, and then uh, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on a. Uh, you the it's bonus the, 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 no uh, this. It's a cantrip. Yeah, but isn't a bonus? Isn't it a bonus action only? Sacred Flame is an action. Oh, okay. So uh, the spiritual weapon was the bonus action. Actually. Gotcha. Okay, that's what I'm getting confused. All right. Awesome. Uh, which one? Well, uh, I would say also Grick Alpha 3, if you'll allow it. Otherwise, yep. I can squeeze nope, to like Grick Alpha 1. That, okay. uh, I am fine with that. Uh, do you want to drag the save on him, or you want me to just roll? Uh, actually, it's an attack roll, isn't it? Oh, no, no it is a nope, save. Nope, it's a save. But you should have it on your sheet. Yeah, there you go. I do. Oh, yeah. and he succeeded. Is that no damage? I that, assume? that is that is no damage, correct. Okay, then I'm done. All right. Uh Calliope. I'm gonna use my final second level spell slot, possibly against my better judgment. And I am going to put a cloud of daggers. Ooh. Five feet on each side. So I'm going to stick that. Do, 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 do. Oops. Uh I don't know if you need to do a token for this. I do have it I do have a token for it. Okay, so, basically, it's, it's directly east of Grick Alpha number three and directly south of Grick Alpha number one in that little square there. Okay. But we'll hit both of them, but nobody else. Uh, oh, you mean like... Cloud of, Cloud of Daggers is a five-foot square, not a ten-foot square. Yeah, you have to put it on... It's, oh. it's poorly worded, but it's it's five foot on each side. Right. So it, it's a five foot by five foot by five foot cube. Utini is really, really mean to me. I'm going to put that cube on Grick Alpha number one and hopefully take him down a few pegs. Okay. Uh, well, hang on. Which, can I? All right. So so which um, which square? Like the, the one in front of Utini or the one in front of Beavis? Or, oh. or the one behind? The one behind. I don't want to risk hitting either one of them. Okay, I'll 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 put it right there then. Okay, does that uh, do immediate damage? No, it does it on the start of their turn. Okay. And that is my action. And I'm. Oh, uh, let's see. Who is L? Just seems to be the most injured. I'm just checking. Um. Cr uh, her, well. Her and Who Utini and, and, and Beavis. Yeah. Which one needs, I mean, do, can I tell who needs the healing the most? They're all within a few points of each other, oh. so. Crap. Uh, 
Oh, here we go. I'm just checking something. Okay, I can only heal one of them. Uh, I would say heal the one that can do the most damage, which would not be me. Is that Beavis or Utini? I, I'm not going to say anything on that. <laughs> I'm asking Beavis and Utini. Which one of you do you think I should heal? Probably I do more damage just because I have an extra attack. But We both do, but yeah, against these type of things, you do more damage. Okay. Still take a step forward and still cast that? Oh, wait, that would be a... Never mind, I already wasn't a bonus action, so yeah, I can't do anything but Cloud of Daggers, can I? Never mind. Okay, well, That's well, you have a bonus action yet. Uh, do you have any cantrips that can do bonus action? I think, isn't Vicious Mockery a bonus action? Nope, it's an okay. action. Okay, alright. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I am going to... I do have power, Song at Rest, Song of Rest. I can use soothing music or oration to help revitalize my wounded allies during a short rest. Never mind. Okay, okay. I'm done. Okay. Uh, Utini, you are up. Okay. Uh, looks like I'm already raging. Uh, do 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 do. Like, I don't remember how hard these things are to hit. <laughs> pointed out in chat that healing word is a bonus action. So could I sneak up? It, it is, but you cast a spell already, and you can only cast one spell in a turn. He's right. So you you can cast a cantrip and another spell, but you can't cast two spells in a turn, even if one's a bonus action and one's not. Okay. Um, do we remember how hard these things were to hit? Um, their armor class is pretty good. They have a thick, leathery skin. I might regret this, but I'm going to attack recklessly then. <laughs> Ruh -roh. Are you, uh, fl uh, frenzying? I'm, yeah, I'm already raging. Not raging, frenzy. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just check. That is, that's already on so i okay. get three attacks <laughs> yeah your uh your little uh section here that shows me what you all have active <laughs> is like two three three sentences long it's it's a little lengthy that is a hit uh actually hang on let me check really quick i think i have my shield on i do so oh my goodness Grab the thing. All right, so 17 damage with the first hit. It's okay. only light. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, hit. that's not right. Why? Because I should still be attacking with advantage. It might. It might only be looking at the first attack. That's a hit anyway, so don't worry about it. Uh... But I want to get it on there correctly. Yep. All right. So attack number two. Ugh. Come on. Let's get some higher rolls here, buddy. All right. Attack number three. Also a hit. Ugh. It's a little better. At least, the, at least the, the fire damage is doing well. The Actually, weapon damage was two one and one on D eights. Yeah, but that was a massive amount of damage. It was. Uh, that There's did, no way I could do any close to that. Yeah, that did hurt it. Um, okay, yeah. so uh, uh, you got any got anything else? No, I'm done. All right, Beavis, you're up. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to uh, attack the same one. Okay. And I'm assuming this is not a fiend or undead, right? It is not. It is a large monstrosity. A monstrosity. And that is a hit. And I'm gonna sm I'm gonna smite. Um, that only was that only work against evil creatures? No, anything. Okay. There's extra against fiends and undead. Oh no, then. Ooh, that was sucky. 
Okay, well, here's my next attack. And hit. And Can you re-roll ones and twos? No. I cannot. That's okay. a that's a two-handed weapon fighting Oops. thing. No, it doesn't matter. It's dead. Yes. Ha ha. Yay, Beavis. Yeah, see? <laughs> I, I killed it. All right. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And if and it falls to a octopus like glob on the ground with bleh, and your cloud of daggers is now hovering in the air there. All right. Uh on his turn, Rumpadump is going to stay behind Jerry. Uh Shambling Mounds. Shambling Mound number one is going to shamble. Uh burp, burp. and shambling mound number two. Burp, burp. And Shamley Mound number three, murp, murp. Eldeth. Boy, those things really do shamble. Mm -hmm. They don't move <laughs> very fast. Okay. I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on... Not telling me what number it is. The one that's right next to Beavis. Or is that the... That's number two. Number two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I failed at save, so go ahead and roll damage. Excellent. Did it? Did that work? It did not. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, I'm rolling damage, but it's not. Well, you know, you drag. You, it, we, so. Okay, so, uh, let me try. Hold on. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I think maybe because the blood splatter's there, so sometimes my oh, computer's yeah, picking yeah, up yeah. the blood splatter, yeah. and sometimes... Yeah. Okay, thank you. There we go. Try it again. Let's try it again. I forgot about the blood splatter. There it goes. It should be 2d8, though, right? Um, no, she's not that high a level cleric. Doesn't matter. She is only... I'm level it, 2. It doesn't, it's, a, it's a cantrip. It scales off character level, right? Didn't we? I, I seem to remember having this discussion before. I believe you are correct. Uh, let's look here. Um, yeah, it's character level. Yeah, it's character when level. When you reach this level. So I have to read a, re roll another one then? Yes, you have to roll another one. Okay, there we go. Um, we should fix that on your sheet here. Hold on. Um, so... I mean, she could do it. All you do is drag another D8 into the damage box. Well, there, well, there's no D8 in there right now, though. I'm looking right at it. So, well, that didn't work. Why not? Um, oh, duh. Because I'm putting you in the wrong place. Oh, that didn't work either. Oh, I see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I put another... There we go, that worked. All right. All, All right. right, and I'm just going to stay where I am. Okay. Blocking the path this way. All right, all right. Now, Glabagool is up. Now, he gets to... Uh, let's see. He... Okay, so he can do either a pseudopod attack or a engulf attack. Uh, Wait, isn't he smart enough to cast, like, Power Word Kill or something? <laughs> No, no, he is very smart at the moment. Um, okay, so he is going to try to engulf the Grick. So the Grick gets to make a dexterity saving throw, which it failed. Um... On a failed saving throw, the cube enters the creature's space and it takes 3d6 acid damage and is engulfed. Ooh, a 5 and a 5 and a 6. Nice. Uh, okay. Uh, it takes that much at the start of each turn and the engulfed creature can't breathe. Engulfed creature. Okay, so, so he's engulfed. We'll just kind of do one. I'll put him half on him. That way we'll know. Um, but Jerry, you're not going to be able to hit him with your spiritual hammer anymore because he's actually inside Glabagool. Okay. 
Uh, all right, and that is going to be the end of round three. Uh, top of the order, round two, Grick number two. Uh, it's going to... Uh, it's going to move here. And it's going to... One, two, Eldeth. Three, four, Beavis. I'm sorry, Eldeth. It if lashes I die, out. my last words are going to be, I told you so. It, it, it lashes out with its tail and misses, and it lashes out with its tentacles and misses. Yay! All right. All Thanks, right. Baronar. All right, so gr uh, Grick number three uh, uh, is restrained and takes acid damage at the start of the cube's turn. Okay, so it, it gets to make a DC 12... Strength check to escape uh, being engulfed. So, strength check. And what did I say? 12. Uh, rolled a 13. So, it, it escapes out, and I'll put it back one square. Okay. And that's all it can do. Um, Jerry, you're up. All right, so I am going to move the spiritual weapon uh, for the bonus action portion and uh, go after Grick Alpha 2. Okay. And that is a miss. And that is a hit. Oh, can you guys hear me? Or uh, hold on. Will you hear me? Yep. We sorry, no, that's that's my that's my problem. I I occasionally we can hear both of you. Occasionally, okay, my, good. Occasionally, my Discord cuts out. I have no idea why. I've been trying to figure it out. All right. Okay, so I cast Spiritual Weapon, and I hit did seven points of damage. Yep, um, not... I accidentally made a roll for Sacred Flame, but since I was going to do that for my other action, let's just call that the roll, and it was a mess. So well, you I rolled, well, well, also, you dropped it on Beavis. <laughs> so you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have done that. <laughs> so. <clears throat> um, did, you do the, did you do it on the Grick, though, the... You do it again, because yeah, do it again, because you that you, you rolled it on Beavis anyway. It didn't matter, Jerry. So it was a mistake. Just I'll I'll, I'll copy the mistake, and it failed. So roll damage. Fifteen. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that was a good roll. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Utini. Oh uh, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Clippy. Mm -hmm. Clippy. My bad, Clappy. Sadly, I'm looking at Cloud of Daggers, and I'm not seeing anything that says I can move it as a bonus action, which makes me sad. No. Mm -mm. So the Cloud of Daggers, does that just... Well, I'll leave it there for now. Maybe one of them will move into it. We, should, should... Uh, we should give you a, a concentration version of that spell just so you can stick it on yourself. A concentration effect. Yeah, yeah. Um... That might actually be part of the. I thought he was going to say he wanted me to cast Cloud of Daggers on myself, know. in which case I would not do what I'm about. Um. To do. Oh yeah, there isn't there isn't a function on Cloud of Daggers to do that. No, it's just a a bookkeeping thing that. Yep. Puts it on it like lets us as the DM it kind of automat no lets you know that you have a concentration spell and also. Yep. Lets everyone else know that if they hit you and programming stuff. Okay, uh okay, I'll put his bonus action on Utini. Okay. Even though he's beat. Okay, you get five points back. Level spell slot because I'm out of second and third. And as that that was a bonus action, so it's my action. I am going to cast vicious mockery on Rick Alpha number three. Okay. You can go ahead and drag the save onto him. What do you call him? Uh, I'm thinking. 
You looked better inside the cube. Huh. Didn't Fine. make it. Fine. <laughs> Jerk. And that's my turn. Okay. Machine. Well, interesting. I was hoping there'd be something in front of me still. Oh, you can move, attack, and move back. Well, but <laughs> maybe. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm going to move up. Going to attack recklessly. Uh, and go after Grick Alpha 2. Ooh, I saw one in there. Yeah, dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Advantage. There we go. There's an 8. 20 damage. So we'll attack it again. Come on, big money. And bonus action, attack it again. This is excellent. See? And then I will move back. Into <laughs> I, knew you, I knew you would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had all to right. hit all three times, though. That's... All right, so. Bleh. All right. Uh, Beavis. Beavis, make a perception check. Oh, perception, huh? That's my favorite skill. I know. Yeah, come on, I'm gonna make a perception check. Okay. Never mind. What are you doing? Uh, I am in a predicament because I can't. Uh, um, I move up. Go there. Yeah, I'll go there and I'll attack the Shambling Mound. Oh, wait. Do I want to do that? Yeah, why not? Could hurt. And I suppose it's not a fiend or undead. Uh, nope, it is a plant. And I'm going to smite. Is my smite damage? And I'm going to attack it again. Okay. And a 12 is a miss. 12 is a miss. They don't have great armor classes, but you're not going to do it with a 12. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, done. Okay. You're going to stay out there, huh? Can you move back again? You'll get an AOL. I, attack of opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I can. I mean, I'm hurt. Yeah, don't then don't. All right. Oh, he I, only gets one attack, right? I mean, actually, I have. I mean, look. for an attack of opportunity, you the you'd only get one attack. Correct. Yeah, I'll stay. All right. All right. Uh, on his turn, Rumpadump, he kind of does his little waddle thing, and he waddles up all the way up to you guys, and he holds out his hands. And spores, communication spores, start flying from his fingertips. And um, shambling mound. Uh, let's see. So that's so that's what he does. So then, um, shambling mound one turns and shambles away. And. Shambling mound number three does the same thing. However, somebody attacked shambling mound number two. So his his calming influence doesn't function on that particular shambling mound. So Beavis. That was me? Uh, yeah, you're the one that attacked him. All right, so here comes slam attack number one. And, ooh, that's a miss by one. And slam attack uh, number two. Uh, oh, I got to hit with both attacks to engulf you. Ooh, natty 20. There goes the crit, and it's just a regular crit. But still a crit. Excellent. And, ooh, 18 Oof. points of damage. Ow. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Eldeth, you are up. Okay. I'm going to move forward. And let's see. My movement is 25. So 5, 15. I can go there. I'm going to attack with Dawnbringer. Okay. Uh, that is a hit. Excellent. Respectable damage. Is that all you got? And yes, I have no spells left and Sacred Flame is not a bonus action. So okay. I'm done. All right. All right. Uh, Glabagool will attempt to engulf the Grick again, which means that um, he moves on to his square and... All right, how does this work again? Uh, Shadow Mount engulfs by grappling it. Oh, looking at the wrong creature. Duh. All right. Um, ba, 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 ba. DC 12 dexterity saving throw and fails. So Glabagool engulfs him again. Oh, Glabagool. Four. Uh, 11 damage. All right. And that is going to be the end of round four, top of the order, round five. Uh, what was that again? I get a strength check. Oh, not him, him. All right. So we'll do a strength check. God, these things are strong too. Uh, that is a miss. So he stays engulfed. And he takes damage on Glavagul's turn. Jerry. All right. Uh, first off, I am going to move the spiritual uh, weapon. I believe it can only go 20 feet. Uh, is that true? It is 20 feet, but it also doesn't occupy a square, right? So it could... I Couldn't I, it attack it, from... Uh, yeah, I can, I'll give it, if you want to move it towards that Shambly Mount, I'd give it to you. That's just, like, right within the range. Plus, you can float it in the air over the dwarves and, you know, thump it on its melon or something. We're pretty short. I was going to say anything. If we, yeah, we could do that if we were <laughs> just going to fudge movement a little bit. Sure. And, uh, yep. All right, go for it. Rolled a one. Natty one. Oh no, we have a fumble effect, folks. We have a fumble effect. Yeah, but it's a spiritual weapon. Uh, oh, still, it could it gonna get itself? stuck or something. Um, it's. Oh, you know what? I have fourth edition crits turned on. <laughs> fourth edition. <laughs> yeah. 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 I did this. I did this in. Um, I did this in uh, our Dungeons of the Mad Mage game too. Uh, I just have are to there. Turn are there options between the different editions for critical uh, fumble? No, it just says it just says that the target hits you with an attack. If this action is impossible, your original target gains a hero point. Well, there are no hero points in in fifth edition. There's inspiration. Um, I'll have to I'll have to find it at some point. I, I got so many stupid modules in my in my uh, thing here now. Finding it is like a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it off the top of my head. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, it swings wildly and misses. So I'll just say that it's next attack is at advantage. Uh, that was, that would have been your bonus action, Jerry. Correct. And then I'm going to follow through with a sacred flame. Okay. Uh, 
It failed. Oh, great. Do damage. Seven points. And uh, I am going to use a little movement of my own just to kind of get myself in a slightly better place to heal if I need to, so. Yeah, I'll sit there. Okay. Alrighty, Calliope. I'm going to move up here right behind Beavis and use my bonus action to toss a healing, yes, level one, excellent, healing word on him. Okay. You know I that's a rain I... spell, right? Did I have do I have that mixed up with your wounds? Probably. Oh, probably. Yeah. Damn it. You can I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll let you go back 5 feet if you want. Just use cure wounds. I so. be here, but uh he gets 1d8 plus 4 instead of 1d4. Should I just roll another 4 on him? Should I roll he gets 1d8 plus 4 instead of 1d4. Sure, just roll another 4 sided. Give another point. You have to add, manually add that, Beavis. Excellent. I will. Thanks. All right. And as my action, I am going to throw a vicious mockery on Shambling Mound number two and say, Boy, you look awfully speedy for something shambling. <laughs> he was and very I'll hurt. Just... He was very hurt by that statement. Yeah. I'm helping! Wow. Nothing like rolling a pair of ones. pair of ones, yeah. And that is my turn. All right. Uh, Utini. Oh. There we go. Mm, pardon me. Uh, coming through. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the steps over, rump it up. <laughs> Attack is a mound. With uh, Reckless Abandon. And a hit. Uh, wow. Oh, there was an... <laughs> I thought I got the three. No, <laughs> drop, drop the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 21 damage. Jesus, what is it? It's insane. <laughs> Go again. <laughs> 17 damage. And another hit. Another one dropped. Yep, Fantastic. Saw, saw that. And 14 damage. Yep. <clears throat> Is that it? All right. Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. Oh, Is that you? it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Beavis, you're up. Okay, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, finish this guy off. Okay. And he's not a fiend or undead. Nope. I will ask that every single time. I understand. I hit. Yep. And I will swing again. Natty one. And that's a miss. No, no special effect. No. Oh, okay. And I didn't kill it. All right. Uh, Rumpin' Up will continue to use his spores to hold off the other shambling mounds. Um... That Shanley Mound's going to shamble away a little further. Uh, that one is going to either attack uh, Beavis or Utini with advantage from Jerry's fumble. Uh, we'll do one, two, three, four. Hey, Beavis. And we'll do a slam... And even with advantage, I missed. Another slam. Ooh, that one's a hit, though. And also, too, when you guys, now that you're up close to these things, I don't know if you can see it on the token, if you scroll really far in, you can see that there's weird, even weird growth for a shambling mound. Like, it's got mushrooms on its head, and... Um, <laughs> there's a there's a pers person there's, a, there's yeah. a person in it, but we'll, uh, there's actually a drow in, in it there. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like it's something weird is going on with it. Um, and uh, then the last shambling mound, he is also gonna shamble away a little further back up to the uh, 
edge there, Eldith. Okay, I shall try to finish it off okay. by attacking with Dawnbringer. And that's a hit. Excellent. For uh, why did you roll twice? I only rolled once. Um, no, you didn't. I don't know why that. I don't know why I did that. I only rolled once. Okay, so <laughs> I need to add six points back. I think it only took the damage once, though, right? Um, I don't know. I wasn't watching. No, it says. It's the, the chat log only says it took damage the second time. The first one it rolled, but it didn't. Doesn't look like it landed. Um. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh that's no, weird. she didn't drag it. You didn't. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um. So I'll give you the first damage. She so it takes three more. Okay. That's weird. You must. Yeah, I it. only rolled one time. Dropped it on him once. Okay. Weird. All right, Glabagool. So on Glabagool's turn, the Grick takes uh, two D. Oh, ooh. Oh, my. I didn't realize it was that much damage. Hold on. Uh, how do I, if restrained it? Um, oh. oh, I see what it's doing here. So it's restrained, and now it takes, no, it added restrained twice. Why isn't it? Um, take the O out on the damage. It says DMGO should be just be DMG. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's supposed to take 66 acid. Um, yeah, it's not. Um, it's, it's adding an effect. It's not doing damage. Well, it. But it's in the same sentence, so I think it's just worded badly for Fantasy Grounds coding. So I will just grab a six-sided and just do six d6. So that's 23 damage, and it is still up. <clears throat> it might do that damage like on the beginning of its turn. It's a, It does. On the beginning, it takes it at no. the beginning of the... When... No, that's not what it says. Um, I'm it, talking about the effect, like the effect that you put on the alpha, the Grick. It might, it might just be a coding because it has damage ongoing, so it oh, might take it on the beginning of its turn, on the beginning of its turn or something. Oh, like that. so I should have put it on before I made it the Glabagool's turn. Okay, yeah, that might be correct. I see what you're saying. Um, all right, uh, do, do, do. all right. So we're up to round number six. Uh, see it. Uh, the golf creature can't breathe. It's restrained and takes the start. Of each of the cubes turn so it actually took that incorrectly they don't they they have it it's it it's not coded correctly um i get that damage back hold on um yeah that 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 is not working correctly um because it should be at the beginning of the cubes turn not the beginning of the creature's turn uh, i'm gonna take that off Okay, uh, so the Grick is going to try and escape, and he needs to make a strength check. And he fails, so he stays right put, right there. All right, uh, Jerry. Okay, uh, first off, I am going to have the spiritual weapon attack. It hits on it with a 15. Uh, yep. It does one point of damage. Okay. Actually, it looks like then, it hurt it. <laughs> did a follow up with the Sacred Flame. Okay. And save missed, so we'll go ahead and do damage. All right, seven points of damage. And I'm going to stay where I am. Um, actually, real quick, no one's really that badly hurt, are they? Um, Beavis yeah, but don't worry, yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Um, Clippy. I'm going to pick it up and throw down my vicious mockery first. Okay. You call yourself Mound? You look more like an Almond Joy. 
<laughs> wow. I would say he made that save regardless of what you rolled. Yay! Um, <laughs> I thought it was clever. All right. He made a save. And then as my action, I am going to toss a cure wounds on Beavis. Okay. All right. And now I have just one spell slot left. That's my turn. Okay. Matini. Man, this thing's still alive. Uh, All right. I'm going to recklessly attack again. Okay. And I'm going to use my bonus action to... uh, Smack this mound. Okay. It's dead. It had one hit point left. Fantastic. So so Calliope could have killed that... it with a vicious mockery. <laughs> if the joke would have been uh, just a little better. <gasps> so I will then um, move over here and uh, tell Glabagool to let the Grick go and ready in action to attack the Grick with my attack with an attack action when he does so. Okay. All right. He will do that on his turn. All right. Uh, Beavis. Beavis. Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. So I could walk out. So you didn't attack it for some reason. Uh, it's, it's, in the, it's, it's, it's in the, it's in the, it's in Glabagool. Oh, completely inside of him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'm, I'm readying my attack action to attack the Grick when Glabagool lets it go. So I can't <laughs> I can't attack without hurting either of them or both of them? Eh? You would hurt you would hurt Glabagool, not it. Eh? That doesn't hurt me. That's fine. I, I'll do the same thing. Okay. All I'll right. So so Rumpadump will continue doing what he's doing. Uh that shambling mound is going to shamble away and sit down there and effectively be out of combat. Uh, that one is going to crumble to the ground. And that one is going to climb up the ledge and sit up here and effectively be out of combat as well. Eldeth. Well, I'm not sure if there's much that I can do other than move forward here and be ready to attack if he lets that thing go. Okay. All right. Glabagool. Uh, so at the beginning of the cube's turn, it's going to take damage. Yeah. So let me. And then the cleanup crew, crew is here, ready to go. <laughs> All right. And it's going to take. Uh, oh, it's still alive. Not by much, though. Excellent. And then he steps backwards. So, uh, Utini was first in the order, so go ahead, Utini. Yeehaw. It's done. Uh, Probably. Yeah, yeah, he's only got three hit points left. Okay. Well, he gets 21. All right. And that, so we are officially, let me get rid of this dude. We are officially out of combat. Um, so everybody kind of takes a step, ow, ow, you know, takes a little bit of a breath. Um, you do hear more sounds coming from that plateau up above. And um, uh, it sounds like you, in the very distance, it, almost like you're hearing singing. Maybe it's more bards. Go, go check. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna check on. I'm gonna check on L. Death. Are you okay? Oh, I, I'm not feeling the greatest. I kind of feel like telling them all I told you so, but I think I'm gonna be fine. Thank you. Because yeah, I'm gonna lay on hands. Okay. Myself. Yeah, I could do like healing I'm, in that. I'm if gonna. Needs it. I'm gonna give these two some space. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yes. can I hug? Can I like hug her and lay on hands both butts at the same time? Sure, as long as it's done tastefully. <laughs> and Glabagool says, "I'm right with you there, big boy." <laughs> <laughs> do humans often do this weird touching thing? I'll give I'll give each Indeed. of us ten, ten hit points back. Okay. Thank you, dear. 
for the moment, you don't appear to have any antagonists nearby. Okay, well, we are leaving. We're going back to town. Town? Yeah, whatever, the, the grove. Screw this. You are place. in the grove. No, oh, where is... they were, li- where the, everyone was living. This is where everybody's living. You guys are at the bottom of this big circular uh, terraces. And up on the higher levels of these terraces is where a lot of the myconoids live. You're just at the you're just at the very bottom here where the monsters had invaded, but but apparently something else is going on. Okay, well then can we go into the underdark and uh, find a place to camp? Um, if you wish to retreat out of the Neverlight Grove, that is and that is definitely an option. I would like a rest. I really would. I really want to rest. I I would be down for that. I think we came into this fight unprepared and we're lucky we made it out. Unprepared. Okay. So let me hear the official word. The official what? word Pancake. is Eldeth wants to go back and rest. Okay, so you want to leave the Neverlight Grove. Is that what I'm hearing? Are, are we a, done with what we were supposed to do here? Like, what what were we supposed to do here? Um. Well, the 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 king. Uh, which king was it that he, you guys talked to? Um. So there's two kings. And, um, oh, see, now you caught me unprepared here. Uh, if I recall, they asked us to come to the front to Bassid- help fight yeah, the battle. Yeah, Basidia. So the, the King Basidia asked you, um, to help. He said some monsters have, um, intruded upon the never like grove and he uh, asked you to go clean them out while he was going to look in to some other unrest that was going on in one of the upper terraces. And that's where Shushar and stool went with him there. So if you're assuming that the Gricks and the shambling mounds were the foes, yes, you have defeated them. However, the weird incident with the drow, who plummeted to her death and told you to run as fungus and other uh, vegetation were eating out her brain. Uh, That might tell you that maybe there's something else going on here. You're just not sure. Isn't rumped up from here? Uh, He is. And maybe he he could uh, enlighten us and what needs to uh, be happening. Well, he, he'll he'll come up to you and he'll and 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 he'll use his communication spores and he'll say, uh, "The Gricks are our enemies." He says, um, "Thank you for thank you for defeating them. They they plague the Grove quite a bit." He's he's very concerned that he was able he was lucky you was lucky that he was able to um, talk to the Shambling Mounds and make them go sit down or be inactive, as it were. Um, he says that that is not normal. He says neither is the um, the humanoid that plunged from the top level, um, and and he says I I don't he doesn't recognize the funguses and spores that were growing out of it. He says that 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 is not something that we see in the Neverlight Grove. Something else is going on. He says. If you zoom back your map, you can kind of see the terraces. This is only the very bottom, but these terraces kind of go up into the darkness above. <clears throat> so, not done yet. Potentially, no. However, you can leave at any time. 
And Jerry, I'm going to get rid of your hammer here. Yeah. So, I mean, and we can't take a rest down here. I would say you couldn't take a long rest. If you wanted to try and take a short rest, you can take your chances. A long rest? I don't know that a short rest really gets us much. You can use hit dice healing. Yeah. And that, Calliope that's... has the song that would make that more effective, too. That's true, although I would really, really, really like spell points back, or spell slots back, but Yes, I have no spells whatsoever other than my cantrip. I have my cantrips and one first level spell slot left. But it seems like we have more work to do here. I will only come back, but I mean, we were rushed here when we said we weren't ready. We killed some dudes that they want us to kill, and then, you know, now we can take our time. All right, so what's it going to be? I'll go with whatever the majority thinks is the right thing to do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we really have a leader on this one. Hey, who who really needs a long rest? Eldeth. I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. And Calliope. Evis, well, I think you're the deciding vote, actually. Oh, I have to vote? I already told you what I wanted to do, so... <laughs> okay, you want to leave. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. But, I mean, if you guys, you know, bring up another valid point or something, we could cool. just We want to stay alive. Let's do yep. this. Yep, exactly. And I don't feel like risking too much for these uh, things, so... Uh, I mean, we'll be right back. We're going to be a... it's continuing to clear out crap, right? Absolutely. Okay. Right, hey, we just got to go do a thing. Uh, we'll be <laughs> back. Okay. Uh, so, so you're gonna you're gonna uh, leave. So Rumpa Dump will escort you out, or show you the path out, and then he says, "Thank you. I'm going to find my my king now." And he 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 departs. Um, I mean, says, we don't have to leave, leave, but we need a safe place. Well, hold up for eight hours. Yeah. Well, you're going to be leaving this area, though. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, kind of going back to. Um, I mean, they had a little city. I thought. This is the city. You're in, but you're in the bottom part of it. Okay. It, it's like a giant. It's like a giant cone going up into the sky, with different terraces all around it, filled with fungus and everything. Now, the outlying caves and stuff. Yeah, I'm look, I was looking for that picture. Um, here it is. Yeah, so you, you still have this, this area here, but this is like as you're coming up to the grove, okay? Like you go through that little passageway there, and now he is a, like kind of where you are now. Oh, cut out. Yeah, he did. Oh, sorry. Uh, this whole area just surrounds the the cave complex that you're in now all right does that make sense looks pretty lots of mushrooms yeah <clears throat> so um so we do need to be i'm fine with going in for another push to clear things out but yeah let's get our hit points back let's get our spells back let's make some changes if we need to and head on in I okay. mean, if we die in our next fight, we're not going to be able to be any help in, with anything else. So, I just don't remember what the time crunch was. I don't know. Okay. So, so you're heading out? They kept saying, we have to go now. We have to go now. We're like... <laughs> Hi. I mean, what happens if we well, rested outside well, there, the town? Well, there was... Okay, we so... We've already been here later. So, mm -hmm. well... Yeah, but you did. I think I made that point last time. Yeah, yeah, but well, you can't retro time fit things. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. Like what that. Uh, what does Rumpa Dump want us to do? Uh, Rumpa Dump, he's not very because he's kind of like the emissary for the king yeah. or something, um, right? Well, he wants yeah. to report what he saw to the king because he thinks sure. that there's a 
something Off- going on that yeah. needs to be needs to be figured out. He doesn't understand. Is, uh, did you sure lose us again? Oh, you guys can't hear me. What's his? You guys can't hear me. Hello, hello, hello. There he is. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what happened. It, it, I could hear you guys just fine. Um, okay. The inverse of what normally happens. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. All right. I'm. I'm sorry. So I'll kind of reiterate a little bit. Um, you can't retro time, go back in time, and 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 say, oh well, you know, if we would have showed up eight hours later, this would have been happening at a different time. No, it doesn't work like that. Um, these are linear decisions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the body was forced. Time. Yeah, so so you guys, the 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 urgency before was, hey, there's monsters invading the bottom terraces of the Neverlight Grove. You know, please go in there and kill them. You you did that, and you came back, or now you're coming back out. So, or you stay in there and keep exploring because so Rumpa Dump thinks there's something else going the... on. But we satisfied the emergency, the go now emergency. Um, potentially, but like I mentioned before, Rumpadump says something else is wrong. These shambling mounds have have uh, um, harmful fungus growing on them. This drow plunged to her death with fungus and and vines eating at her brain. He says this, that that's not normal. Something else is wrong here. Um, That's a really good reason not to be there, too. Yeah, I mean, you you, you guys did what you said you were going to do. I, I mean, that that's well within your, you know, you're privy to say, well, I, I think we're good, We but we have to rest if we're going to do anything more. So that's kind of what I'm hearing. Indeed. Okay. All right. So you guys, you guys make your way out of the the terraced area and the first thing you notice is that um there aren't a whole lot of myconoids about in fact after rumpadump leaves you it, it suddenly gets very quiet and you guys pass beyond um like a cave barrier of some kind and like maybe if you look at this picture that I sent before, um, maybe maybe it's like that little tunnel right there um, where you see light on the other side. You know, you pass through that area there, and suddenly, once again, you hear a chorus of singing, and it it it's a lot louder than before. Obviously, to travel to where you are now from where you were before. And all of a sudden the fungus starts to close in on the passage that you guys are in. And oh, who's you have to, singing? you have, well, hang on. Oh, so everybody has to make a decision. Are you going to run for it to get outside of the grove? Or are you going to run back in? So real quick though, to that we heard the singing, and the singing coincided with the growth of the sort of fungus mushrooms towards us. No, no, not towards you. It looks like this opening that you're walking through. Like imagine that this picture, that that the a large section of it here, where the where it's like a lighter blue. All of a sudden, the funguses start growing, and vines start coming out, and 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 mushrooms and and lichen starts growing over everything in it and it's just it's closing in it looks like this singing is kind of closing off the the never like grove um you guys imagine that you're like halfway through the tunnel do you run back into the grove or do you run out to safety jerry the cleric runs out unless everyone else is staying behind no question I'm gonna have to grab him and hold him. I was like, "We're gonna have to stay." Unfortunately. Okay. Because we probably won't be able to get back in if we leave. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, okay. I, if you want to run, I mean, I could run too. But <clears throat> we it it's 
yeah. not going to be good if we, if if we leave. Okay. So okay. you guys, you guys got a moment or two, and you you guys kind of Beavis, you kind of turn and you want to go. You're thinking about going back in, and you see Glabagool right there in front of you. And he says, "My friends, I don't know if you want to go back in there." Wait, back right. in where? Behind us or forward? Uh, back into the Never Like Grove. That though that that sound. What did you What did you call it? Singing. Yes, that that singing is. I believe it's called a wedding rehearsal song. Yes, what? yes. I think that's. I think that's what it is. Yes. Yes, it is a wedding rehearsal song. Why is that a bad thing? Oh, that's because uh, my Lord and God uh, is going to get married. I don't know how I know this, but I suddenly do. And I also and... know that I have to stay here. And protect her. So you're protecting a demon lord. I I I must do as my So you're protecting a demon lord. Just answer God, the question. Yes. My, my, I'm doing I'm doing what my God commands. I don't know. He says, but you are my friends. I don't want to see you get hurt. If you go back in there, you you might get hurt. You, hey, that sounds great to me. I'm I'm not a fan of getting hurt either. Plus, hey, you know, you have a great, great wedding. Could you do something about the uh thing, you know, point to the door behind me? I uh, no, you well, you guys still have time to get out. If you if you want to retreat, but Glabagool is telling you, he says, "I don't know if you want to go back in there." Do you sacrifice people at these weddings? Oh no, I I I think it's just a rehearsal for the for for it. But um, I believe he's marrying somebody named Zagutmoy. Yes, yes, and and uh, she's she's back in there rehearsing for her wedding. So I'm, going to, I'm going to. I'm going to. Sorry, kill it. I'm going to stomp and yell at the group. Why do we want to go to a mushroom wedding? There's a demon lord in there that we need to go kill. <laughs> I'm confused. I mean, he might to... just die of natural causes before we get there. Utini, did you take off? Because you're awful quiet. I don't know that I have an opinion. Okay. All right. I'm just confused as to why the wedding would be considered a place that we'd get hurt, but okay. It's a demon lord. <laughs> so. It... The adventure is called Out of the Abyss. Okay. So. All right. Well, fine. We'll leave. Okay. So Glavagul says. He, this little pseudopod raises up and he says, I will see you again someday, my friends. Good luck. And then, Can I give you a little advice before we go? Sure. Stop worshipping demon lords or I will have to kill you. He says, I love you too, Beavis. <laughs> and, the, and the fungus just closes up and the passage closes and he's gone. Goodbye, Glabagool. I mean, we're definitely not quite in a position to fight Zugtmoy yes. itself. Oh, we need a little rest before that. Yes. Yep. So, <laughs> so the important thing to take out of this, believe it or not, is pulling back the veil just slightly, is that you have now located a second, the location of a second demon lord. Because Yay. the person being married uh, that Zugtmoid is going to marry is going to be a demon lord now? Well, Zugmoid was marrying Jubilex's god, so what do you think? Yes. Er so, yeah. So, from what, you can, from what you understood about that conversation, it looks like Jubilex and Zugmoid are going to get married. What do you eat? What do you eat you, at a Zugtmoy fungus king wedding? I... Apparently, roast dwarf. <laughs> yeah, dwarven paladin. Good. 
Dwarven Paladin is like the main course usually, uh, <laughs> followed by Bard uh, with a side order of half orc with a side order of half orc <laughs> barbarian. <laughs> As I suspected. The invitations say, you know, how you select your food. Dwarf, half work, half elf. Yeah. So select one. (laughs) So so the other the other point being is that now you guys are a little bit on your own as far as getting out of here because the guys who are your guides are all gone now. Um But yeah, it turns out that they were demon worshippers all along. Hmm. No, that's why you want to go in there. No, 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 no. Don't don't confuse don't confuse stool and rumpadump and call them demon worshippers. They were not worshiping the uh, Zagutmoy. Yeah, well, that's just as bad. But she was there, so. Do you think if you are in the middle of casting a spell and you die and then the creature eats you, you taste different? <laughs> Do you want to volunteer and find out? <laughs> Is that like something like if a bear takes a roll of toilet paper into the woods? Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I I mean I agree. We're I mean, hey, we're we level six here. Okay? We are not ready to fight sucked boy. I mean nonsense right that's crazy talk you might know so, i'm ready you are not ready no way he's always ready <coughs> yeah but eldis is just gonna trip and twist her ankle again so we need to get the heck out of here before that door closes yeah let's go yeah you did you you basically did um but like i mentioned it is a very important fact that you guys now know the location of a second demon lord in in the underdark um and live to tell about it so now there is a drawback there there is there is a drawback of you guys not staying and i will tell you what that is off the record later um but this leaving was not necessarily a wrong decision i don't want you guys to think it was so it was always an option I mean, so Jerry the Cleric is a generally good person, but he is not, even though he got took a liking to Glabagool and stuff and, and would be disturbed, is disturbed probably to know he's kind of being taken over by demons. You know, there's only so much that he can do, and he's not going to solve all the Myconids' problems. And we cleared out quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I, from my perspective, we helped out quite a bit in a fight we really didn't have much cause for. Um, other than just doing good, right, and maybe learning a little bit about this demon lord thing, but but we didn't know that really going in, right. Well said. Okay, well, I'm guessing you guys are going to put a little bit of distance between yourselves and the grove. Yeah, and I'm probably not having any mushrooms, <laughs> like in stews or anything, for a while either. Okay. All right. So just as a refresher. Um, so I'll put you guys like just east of never light grove there. So with stool and shushar and rumpadump and glabagool gone, the only other person that's ever been in the underdark here for any length of time would be the intrepid dwarf Eldeth. Yes. So by Eldeth's best guess to get to Blingdon Stone, you know, that away. And she points. I point. Don't dwarves have like perfect direction underground? No. That's a huge myth. <laughs> a myth. It's true. Don't tell him. Well, there is no such thing as perfect direction under under in an under dark. You the the caves are twisty turny, you know, suddenly you're to go north you gotta go south. To go south you gotta go north. Um, it's not, nothing's a straight line in the Underdark. So, um, by the distance there, you guys are still a good couple of weeks away 
from getting to Blingdon Stone. Um, but that is better than the month to two, actually over a month that it would take to get um, to Eldes home turf, uh, which is, I always forget. Dang it all. Um, so I see a border, but it looks like we could potentially go west slightly and go down the river. Is that right? Well, pretty um, much all the way to west of Blingdon Stone? To be honest, those aren't rivers, Jerry. This is the Underdark. Those are probably uh, chasms. Um, like I, like I mentioned <laughs> before the stream started, um, the maps for this product are not the greatest. Um, Eldith, you're from Gaunt Grim, Gaunt Grim. I'll spell it in the chat here for you. Uh, L -da 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 -da. right. Yep. There you go. Thank you. Which is, which is a dwarf city that's like, um, not quite underneath Neverwinter, but pretty close. So it is way out on the Sword Coast. <clears throat> and that how would, far is? Yeah, I was just wondering how far is uh, Neverwinter from Battle Rise? I don't remember. Pretty far. Um, it's across the Sword. Do I have a, um, I thought at one time I put a, a full um, Forgotten Realms map in here. Oh, here it is. Ba -ba -ba. It's got a really high def map. I just can't find battle. Yeah, th and this thing is, <laughs> and this thing is huge too. I'm probably going to crash the game just by opening it. Um, let's see. And Battle Rise is south of the Sea of Falling Stars. Um, now I'd have to find it again. It is, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty far. I mean, it's, it's a month, it's over a month's journey just on horseback, just to get, um, to get, uh, to like water deep in the sword coast. Um, Sugars. I'm not, I don't quite remember where I... This map is so large, it's hard to find it. <clears throat> I mean, technically, it's near... Um, Forgot, you can find it in Forgotten Realms Wiki, probably a lot easier. Yeah, pro yeah probably. Um, okay, so it's a long ways away. That's, all, that's kind of all I want. Right, right. I mean, technically, it's near. It's in, it's somewhere west of just west of the Dale Lands. Um, yeah, somewhere just west of the Dale Lands. I'm not. I don't exactly remember where. I usually find it by the swamp that I sent you guys in, but then Neverwinter is up near the Spine of the World, um, way up on the on the top there, and then Waterdeep is down down the street from that. So, Gauntlegrim is. Somewhere between uh, in the triangle that is Waterdeep, Neverwinter, and the High Forest. Somewhere in that area. So we could go up and uh, see some of my cousins. Hey, my can uncles. you keep that map up for just a quick second? Um, well, I wanted in, to it's point in out. Inventory as well, Jerry. No, I wanted to just quick point oh. out for the audience who might be watching briefly a quick DDO fact that if you basically find the Sea of Fallen Stars and keep going west, 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 you'll see Cormier. And then you'll see King's Forest, for example, and the Stormhorns, where you'll ah. see DDO-related things. Oh yeah, that's and that's where that's where Battle Rise is. Hold on. Um, let's see. Yeah, right there. Where's Lay Loon? It's actually it's actually it's actually right at the R of Koromir is the vast swamp. It's it's not on the Battle Rise. Isn't on the map. Um, it would be. Uh, hang on. Let me get a, it, I mean, it's on, it's on the more comprehensive map. That's, but I picked it because it was south of this swamp. Cause I sent you guys into the swamp for that very first D and D night that we did that. So I was looking for a, for a city that was near a small swamp, but then, yeah. So, um, what did you say, Patrick? You said, um, 
I was wondering where Weiloon was. Yeah, I see the mines of Tethimar. Yeah, it's not it's not far. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent. It is somewhere. But where you guys are now in the Underdark, you're farther north and west, so you're probably under um, Anorak, the Anorak Desert, right now, as far as where you would be on the underground portion. When you compare it to um, the other the other map I had up, so when you compare it to this one, I think the Dark Lake is almost directly under Anorak and then you guys would be like between somewhere on the western edge of Anorak by the Silver Marches somewhere in there and if you travel directly west from that then you'll get to Galt Grim which is in that area by Neverwinter Hey while we're talking about DDO and uh, Forgotten Realms hey Jerry you want to keep talking about interesting points on the map like where maybe we're going next in DDO <laughs> Oh, okay. He wasn't going to answer that question anyway. Probably <laughs> not. Yeah. So oh, I can lock that. But yeah, so that. So right oh, yeah. There, and a rock coming 2012. 2012? No, I don't know. They didn't we announce <laughs> that quite some time ago. Oh, okay. Um, I know it was always on a wish list of everybody's. So. It was like announced, and then I think last year or early this year, they said that they didn't have any plans of going there anymore. Those no. plans got sidetracked or derailed or something. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, anyway, all right, cool. Uh, let me close that. So now we have to decide where to go from here. Well, obviously, the closest way to get to the surface is Blingdon Stone. Um, if you're going to do the month long journey to to the sword coast or two month long journey to the sword coast. You're going to have to give me a few weeks to put something together for that because the book assumes you're going to Blingdon stone. I mean, what's our you, ultimate uh, goal here? Get out of the underdark. Yeah. That might not necessarily be your goal. Eldeth, mm -hmm. but, um, everybody was kind of shunted here against their will. So I don't want to leave anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to go whichever direction Eldith goes? Uh no, 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 no. I want to go whichever direction the the demon lords are. Oh, sure. So basically I'm just we looking go for to, things to kill, so yeah, I mean go But real to... talk though, you don't think we can fight a demon lord. Not at level six, your room just be destroyed. I mean Utini is looking for things to kill, but not things that are gonna get him killed out of hand so correct well so so right so basically we i think we should make our way to Eldes hometown uh we supply up maybe find some additional help and then we then we go after something something big like a demon lord perhaps if so we had others with us sounds like a great place to start yep well, hey, if we can get an army with us, or at least another twenty people, perhaps we could do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Eldeth, you will tell everybody that the easiest way to get to the Sword Coast from where you are now is to go to Blingdon Stone, because there's the established <laughs> there are established routes between Blingdon Stone and Galtgrim. Um, that you know, known travel routes where somebody could literally hand you a map and you could get there. Um, what he said. Yeah, what I said. So she would tell you guys that that would be the easiest way because going the there is no such thing as a straight line in the Underdark. So, and it was probably it would also probably because there are other things in that path, as it were. Um, which Eldeth you would know include, hang on, I'm trying to get back to the page in my book here. Um, uh, there is a, uh, uh, a place called the Labyrinth, which is a large section of the Underdark that people tend to go into and never come out of. Uh, there is also, um, some of the areas up to the north are another territory that 
people tend to not come back from. The closer you get to the top of the planet. So it's best to take an established route to get there if that's where you're headed. To me. And I know the established route. But you still got to get to Blingdon Stone first. Let's head to Blingdon Stone. I'm already walking. All right. So you want to go to Blingdon Stone, eh? Well, we want to find a place to rest first. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you can rest uneventfully, and I will apply a long rest to the party. There we go. And you guys can head towards uh, Blingdon Stone. So um, I know in the beginning of the adventure, we kind of kept track of days a little bit and did, uh, uh, you know, scouring, searching for food and whatnot. Um, We're going to kind of skip over some of that right now. Um, It takes you guys a couple of weeks to get in the general direction of Blingdon Stone where you think you're headed in the right direction. Um, More than once, you kind of veer off in one direction and, you know, potentially not the right way and then have to swing back a different direction. But eventually... Hey, I always know where I'm going. No, no you don't. (laughs) Not when you've never been there before. So, but eventually you guys do kind of swing back around and find yourself in a more Eldith, you find yourself in a more familiar um familiar surroundings um whether it be rock formations or um you know some other uh kind of uh um just any other kind of uh I, I don't want to use the word formation twice, but you know, like underground chasms, um, you know, different different types of types of rock, you know, granite versus sandstone, whatever. You you kind of end up putting a couple two of the two together, and and you think you're you're pretty sure you're on the right path. And during the time that you're traveling, you kind of give the party a little bit more information um, about uh, uh, Bling Blingdon Stone. So Blingdon Stone is the Deep gnomes, uh, of, of which Jim Jar, who was with your party briefly, uh, was one. Um, and I have one up on the screen for everybody. I will send it over to the rest of the party. Um, uh, they are, by definition, probably, uh, I mean, they're a character race, obviously. But they're as a race race, they're, they're more neutral than anything else. They're lawful to their own people. They're chaotic to outsiders, of course. But overall, they're more of a neutral race. Um, you would know that while they don't um, bow a knee to the drow, uh, they're not their friends either. Um, and they're not, but they're not necessarily enemies. They do live. Menzel Branson is very close by. Uh, as you saw by that one map, um, I mean, I hate to use the analogy a stone's throw, but it's not very far. Um, so there is some, a little bit of, um, amicable, uh, co coexistence when it comes to, uh, the drow, um, the, the deep gnomes do do a lot of trading with the surface world. Um, and they are established, well, much like the, the, the dwarf from the Sword Coast. They, they do do a lot of trading and traveling and travel routes and stuff like that. They make armor, weapons. Um, uh, they also craft unique items to, to the Underdark. So if you, maybe a dagger that uh, would be a magical weapon underneath, you know, out of the sun, but you take it up to the surface world and it's junk within minutes. So 
you know, their preferred place of living is obviously underground. Um, you guys still there? Just checking. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, let me see here. Hold on. One, two. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, okay. All right. Um, so within, like, like I mentioned before, within a, oh, let me clear these guys out of here. Within a few weeks. You guys find yourselves on um, <clears throat> on a path towards uh, Blingdon Stone. Now, Eldith, you also know that in the past, Blingdon Stone has had a reputation for being a dangerous place, um, only because you know, uh, no deep gnomes are kind of looked down upon sometimes by different factions of the underdark um so you know that you're gonna have to um put forth a little bit of goodwill uh if you want these um these deep gnomes to help you just going up and asking for somebody's help or flashing coins isn't necessarily uh going to get you what you need um to either get to the surface or find uh, a route uh over towards the sword coast it, speaking of coins and stuff, should we maybe consider divvying out the magical items in our inventory? Our uh, if, party if you, inventory? If you want to take a moment to do that, if you want to review them all again and 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 uh, uh, kind of assign assign I, them better. You, I you feel maybe... like someone should wear the necklace that makes Constitution score 19. Holy crap, we have something like that? I thought that shit was given out already. It's... It's just in the party sheet. Okay. Well, the par- the, a... well, don't, I mean, the, the party sheet, don't think that the party sheet is 100% God. I mean, it might have got past us in that respect. But I can always look on somebody's character sheets, including Drax, to see if, um, sure. if, if something was put on somebody's sheet at one point. Um, yeah, Drax doesn't have it. Yeah, that amulet of health is, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty damn nice. Well, I'm I'm all in favor for either party decision or roll off, whichever you guys uh, feel like you. Uh, can. yeah, I mean, there's a couple things I'd take. Where is my party sheet? I'm gonna go ahead and throw something in up, the party sheet that's upper, in my inventory upper, that I'm not using. Upper right corner, it's the three people with the eye next to it. <clears throat> Oh, there it is. I, I clicked on the wrong thing. Thank you. Um, there's also an Ion Stone of Protection. Yeah. That's the one I was kind of eyeing. Well, I mean, what we could do is uh, my suggestion would be um, to have everybody roll and then highest to lowest people pick what they want in their on, in their, on their roll. <clears throat> okay. Unless you want to assign it differently, so. I mean, if someone really needs, really, really needs hit points. That ion stone would be good. So, what are we rolling? Uh, I, I would. Um, I did percent. Yeah, did you really, Jerry? <laughs> that does, that looks like a D ten. It did. Okay, there's percentages. Yeah, yeah. Did you roll per- percentage, Calliope? I just rolled a D10 because that's what I saw everybody else doing. Oh, no. I, I know that Jerry rolled percentage and rolled an 09, but no, go ahead and roll percentage. Ooh, look at that. Some high numbers. All right. Jeez, now I got to make decisions. Yeah, there you go. So, Teeny, you're up, you're up uh, to bat here. Uh... <laughs> hey, Beavis, what's your uh, constitution? Right now, fourteen. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, unless you really, 
Uh, normally, you don't put it that high. Yours is probably higher. Mine's 16. And I can do funny things like if I take the amulet, then my armor, other than the fact that my armor is giving me uh, resistance to necrotic and fire damage, the armor is becomes useless. Because I actually already have I can use my constitution modifier if I'm not wearing armor. <laughs> True, yeah. Um, but we'll just you should really focus on AC, though. Because... <laughs> Well, but that's what I'm saying. Like it almost, yeah. if I'm wearing the amulet of health and I can take my branches of defense back, and then my AC actually goes higher than, but I lose the resistance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I mean, it's, becomes it's a, a question. Yeah. Also, like I can't see how many hit points people have, but we've been rolling in this campaign, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sadly. Um. I haven't rolled badly, so <laughs> I mean. Uh, to reiterate, it the this campaign was if you rolled less than the generic assigned amount per level in that player's handbook, that's what you got. So. Right. I've pretty much averaged all across the board. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm, uh. Hmm. Would other people be interested in the um, scale mail? Plus one scale mail? But that's what you're wearing right now. Is that what you're wearing or you, do you have that in the... That's what I'm wearing right now. Okay. Like, I can do some, some pretty serious gear Tetris here. Um, it's just kind of a weird... Yeah, but you want to resist. I mean, I think that's more important. <laughs> Yeah, it gives me the the resistance and the plus one to saves. Um, all right, uh, I'll take the ion stone. Okay, uh, who is next? Beavis. Beavis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. See, I mean, this is like meta gaming. I don't know who really needs. A lot more health because I don't know anyone's hit points. Well, mine are. Go ahead. My con is sixteen, so and I'm, I'm the other melee in this. So sixteen. Fighter, that, so would, that, that would take it. Yeah, that would give you. That would give you six more hit points. If, if I take that amulet of health, it would literally. Gi it would give me. It would give you more. I it would give me twelve more it. hit points. Oh, fine, I'll take it. Okay. It's either that or Calliope can go from a 10 to a 19 and start killing things on the front line. Do you want it? I mean, do we trust her with a weapon <laughs> in her hands? No, no, but at least she wouldn't be a squishy elf. That's true. I'll, I'll, if you want it, you can have it. It's yours. I, w I will use my pick and give you the amulet of health. She has the next uh, pick anyway. Okay, fine. Then I'll pick something else. If you want it, take it. If you no, don't take it. No. I am taking it. No, I won't. I will take the potion of flying. Okay. <laughs> I will take the amulet of health. Okay. Just drag him off the drag him off the party sheet. Yep. All right, uh, Eldeth. Um. Even note, I would recommend uh, before you change your constitution to nineteen, write it in your notes what your constitution actually is. <laughs> Uh, so you we'll, can remember we'll, later. We'll, we'll, we'll put it on this. It was just flashed on the stream. It's 10. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I'm just saying like, it, it might help to write it down somewhere on your sheet. I didn't realize it was that low even. It, yeah. Well, it's not, kind of, yeah. It's not a bard stat really. <laughs> also, I mean, I appreciate this because if you look at Calliope's inventory, I don't know if you guys can see what I have. Well, I don't think I've ever taken any loot. If you look at my inventory, that's got to become apparent. So, aside from, you know, my playable loot. Are you wearing armor? I, I am wearing ordinary leather armor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, What? Uh, what's the limitation on Bard? Um, uh, good question. Hang on. Proficient in, in, in light armor. Probably proficient in light, yeah. yeah. Uh, Unless you take something different. Correct. For your, yeah, uh, it is light armor only. Yep. 
but your specialty at third level will determine also what kind of armor. Like if you, if you like the 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 sword bard or whatever, you get medium armor and stuff like that. So you're probably a lore bard. I honestly can't remember. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you're a lore bard. Book, bookkeeping oh, note. Yes, College of lore. Yes. I yeah, am. she yeah. is because she yeah. took scorching ray. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That. So yeah, it's light armor. <laughs> uh, technical question. Uh, the armor that I have and the helm that I have, does that count as one magical item or two? Oh, that's from the keep. Um, yeah. No, that is considered two items. Two items. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are what? Because there's like a three item limit, but does that include weapons? Uh, it depends on the weapon. Uh, okay. Like a regular, like, plus um, two Warhammer, you don't have to be attuned to it. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'm going to take it back, because that, that armor is kind of considered a set. I... Uh... The armor also doesn't acquire attunement, right? Because it's, it's three, no, I, three no. attuned items, right? Is that, isn't that right? Um, that's rule, yeah. That's the base rule, yeah. yeah. That's the base rule, yeah. okay. Yeah. So the armor never, never no, plays no, 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 no. Yeah, because, well, remember, and Beavis... I don't know if you remember this, but you have the sword and Utini got the armor. That's what the paladin wore. He wore that armor. Armor. The black iron scale mail. Oh, 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 oh that, yeah, that he's got, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't go together, but that was just right. the historic, yeah, yeah, yeah. historical fact there. Oh, yeah, I wasn't going to give up my great grandpappy's armor. Yeah, even Comic is saying in the chat three attuned items. Right, so I have two. <laughs> okay. Iron stone and the weapon. Okay, so then next up would be Eldeth. Okay. Uh, what do the bracers do again? I can't it's wear plus, them. It's plus two AC if if you aren't wearing an oh. armor or shield or and using no no shield. Got it. So, so I'm not going super to useful. have a conversation with Dawnbringer. And I'm going to ask her if she would be okay if I took this oil of sharpness. Oh, sure. It's, it's very, not, it's not it's very considerate of you. It's not permanent. So, yeah, absolutely. And she wouldn't mind having that on her? Oh, you know what? Hold on. You might not be able to use that with that sword. Um, Because that... it's just... Cause it's like en no, it's energy. The sword itself is energy. Yeah, I think that's what I meant. Like, it's oh just yeah, light, oh, light. oh, I thought you meant light, like in light, light. Um, no, uh, it's a lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, it's it's how do you apply oil and sharpness yeah, to a it's, lightsaber? It's basically Thundar the Barbarian sword for those of you who know the comic reference. Um, hey, I mean, yeah, you, that's you not going to work. Potion, you could take the potion of longevity and make yourself, uh, you know, go go back a few years. Maybe if if you feel like that was a a hotter, more attractive state for your uh, dwarf friend there. <laughs> totally do it. Do the, oh my god! Yeah, if but you don't I take it, I'll take it and I'll slip it into your. Oh, I have so many things I want to talk about. Uh, actually, you know, <laughs> now that I can't get that armor, Jerry the cleric very much wants to be younger. So, hey, he's human. He has the least amount of life for years, right? Yeah. Um, the beaker. There is a possibility, though, that I could go to a minimum of 13 years, and I don't think that would be very wise. <laughs> yeah, the oil of sharpness isn't going to work with Dawnbringer. Okay. Yep, that's a, that was a great point. Uh, evil Beaker, yes. I cannot yes, change my own hit points, so... Now that my con bonus is four, could you and I'm level six? Could you add twenty four hit points to Calliope's total? Uh, you're probably you're, you're probably added trying to add them under the current. You added them under oh, the max. Oh, add them to the max. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so the current. The max, so the okay. So the current just just for the record, the current hit points. That's actually an extension for people who played D and D who don't know how to do math. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's an attention also for people who just don't want to be troubled with doing that math all well, the time. That's exactly it. No, but that's why. The, I put that in there because they're like, well, I got so many wounds in my max. How many hit points do I have left? That's why that's there. That's an extension I can turn on and off. Same thing for uh, on the actions tab. You guys got the stats and stuff on the, and the AC on the top. That's an extension. Oh. 
Okay, so I'm going to ask Dawn Bringer, is it okay if I use Longsword Defender for an hour with this oil? Would you be okay with that? Oh, the, the, the sword isn't isn't uh, greedy or chaotic, so it, it'll do whatever its wielder. As long as you take it out and use it and don't put it in darkness for hundreds of years like it was, it'll be happy with whatever you decide. Oh, okay. So I don't always have to use Dawnbringer. No. I thought there was something in here that she didn't. That she, she always wanted she, to be in my hand. She had been imprisoned for several hundred years under dark, in darkness. And she didn't like that. So just being out is what she wanted in life. Yeah, because it says it prefers that its blade always be present and shedding light in areas of darkness. And it strongly resists being parted from its wielder for any length of time. So even if it's on my hip, it's still yeah, it's attached fine. to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm going to take the oil of sharpness. I'm not going to take the potion of longevity, Beavis, because I could become a 13-year-old little dwarf, or I could age. <laughs> no, me. you only I'm age if you, years. You only age if you take multiple of them. No, it says there's a 10 percent chance. Yeah, it's no, different. Subsequent than, use. It's different than it used to be. Oh. Each time you subsequently drink a potion of longevity, there's a 10 percent cumulative chance you instead age. Oh, okay. But Jerry wants to be younger, and my mm -hmm. beard is at its prime right now, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, only getting better with age, so I'm going to take the oil of sharpness. Yeah, I was kidding, yes. Yeah, I was totally, oh my god. According to my character sheet, I'm literally a baby. Mm -hmm. No, I we no. knew that when you rolled the character up. I mentioned that. No. Literally a baby. Why is that? Can't be right. I did not put that number in there. Well, Where are we finding the age? Uh, it's under notes, I think. Yeah, notes. It's a, Twenty-four uh, years old. Uh, it can't be right. No, I, I, I have to change it. I don't have an age. Yeah. What is? Well, what's a young adult for? A, forty. Uh, okay. uh, forty is is mature. Okay. So yeah. I'm definitely not mature, but yeah, you know. that's yeah, that's fine. Then then that was a mistake that when you created it. I know we, we joked about it because uh, we joked about how old you were because of the other poor cameras running around. You didn't give my character an age. Uh, well, that, that was taken out. You were an NPC that I converted out of the book. Um, uh -huh. I'll say you're uh, the same age as Beavis. 42. Oh, 42. you can pick 42. an age. Yeah. If you go over, a, if you, if you, if you're a dwarf and you go over a hundred, I think there's, um, I wouldn't recommend that because you're no. You're, right. It says in the book you're a young dwarf, so. It says I'm a young dwarf. Mm -hmm. And what's age of maturity? You said forty. Forty. Yeah. Yep. Then I'll be forty. Okay. So it fits the description. All right, Jerry. That leaves you with your pick. I'm gonna run to the potion, open it up, and chug it. All right. So is there anything you have to roll? First uh, 1d6 plus something, right? D6 plus 6. Yep. Go for it. All right. I'm nine years younger. Yay! That's respectable. So, what were you? I have no idea, but I sort of pictured myself as well, probably middle-aged. I, I was going to say, I don't want to put you on the spot here on the stream, Jerry, but uh, I could say that you're, since you are Jerry the Cleric, and you could say whatever your age is minus nine. Yeah, and so I'll, 20. <laughs> <coughs> is that true even what yeah that sounds good well i don't know i'll figure it out but okay. yeah so no, he, I mean, he goes back something to like i was just my headphones and missed it actually oh, okay. i want something like a how about like 35 ish 37 ish after the rollback okay uh make sure you i have like i have a i have a question about this yeah does his hair revert from white back to its natural color? It does not. <laughs> I was just curious. Like, yeah. yeah. No, no, that was, that was from being frightened, not aged. All right. So Jerry, will put that on your sheet. Why didn't that remove off the parcels items? All right. Let me go Gone there. now. So, yeah. Um, but if you look at my sheet under my inventory, the treasure at the bottom, I've got this massive pile of loot. I have no idea what that is or where it came um, from. That was from when I accidentally hit the party share button. Because you guys got 
if you look at the party coins, I mean, you guys got like hundred thousand copper and fifty, almost fifty thousand silver. But that's you don't have that here. Um, some of that you guys got from other adventures, so that might be back in Battle Rise. I'm fine with just to be on your sheet for now. Okay, so yeah, I'll just fix it and I'll put that bag of holding there too. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, that wrong. No bag of holding. I have a bag of holding. <clears throat> do you? Yeah. Oh, me too. That's right. I totally forgot. We do have bags of holding. I was kidding, but it's true. I remember where you guys got those from. I don't know. It's on the sheet. <laughs> It's written down. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got it. I, I remember mean, trying I mean, to shove a dragon egg into it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. Okay. All right. So um any other housekeeping? Yes, no, maybe. No, we're good. I'm no, I'm gonna as long as well, I'm gonna like fill in some of my uh age, weight, height, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Great. Yeah, I, yeah. If we didn't do that initially, I mean, I, I, I usually leave that up to the players to decide, you know, how they want to address that. I mean, I, I, there's some campaigns where I, I've known guys to, you know, start out as seventy year old men. You know, I mean, you can color your character sheet too. That doesn't mean you sure. actually need to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I would say the number of times I've actually filled that stuff out, five percent maybe. Yeah. yeah. I actually have all that age, height, weight stuff on Calliope's. And have had since like day one. I mean, you are kind of the role player of the group. <laughs> I am. <laughs> really? <laughs> you seem to be doing more with Calliope than anyone else. <laughs> you and Beavis. Yeah. But Be- Beavis' role playing is. It's charge the monster. It's char- going to kill me first. Charge the monster. That's the reason why I always play dwarves. Actually, the only thing I don't have filled out on my notes tab is appearance, but I figure, you know, she's got well, we an got, icon. And yeah, we got the picture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, and if you guys ever have a bigger picture that you want, I mean, I could put it in the game and you can, we can put it up on the screen, whatever, so. I actually really like Calliope's icon. That's a basic D&D one, I think. Comes with a D&D pack. So. All right. Um, all right. So with all of that housekeeping out of the way, so we'll pull back the veil a little bit for everybody watching. Hopefully we didn't lose too many viewers. Um, so you, you guys are traveling and you feel like you're very close to Blingdon Stone. Um, Can I make an insight check to trust the DM? No. I will always win that check. Um, you guys feel like you're, you're very close, um, within maybe a day or two, um, by your guess. Um, and part of that is you start to, um, come across worn areas of travel and, uh, even, and and one day you actually come across what Eldith and probably Beavis as well, even though he's more of an above ground dwarf, um, would know as maybe an abandoned mine. Like somebody was mining for, you know, whatever minerals they're looking for down here, gold, silver, copper. Um, uh, but it looks to be very old and um, ha- probably hasn't been used in some time. So you kind of get the feeling that you're you're getting a little bit um, a little bit closer, and um, as you're coming, as you're traveling, like maybe a day, a day or so after that. Um, where is it? Here we go. You guys find yourselves, <clears throat> and I'm going to put you on the map here. Oh, I got to say goodbye to Glabagool out of the combat tracker and Rumpa Dump. All right. So, Utini, I'm going to say you're in the lead, followed by Beavis and Eldeth. 
Usually I've been doing more of a rear guard than a lead. No. Well, you guys can... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put you on the map and I'll let you assort yourself then. I prefer to be squarely in the middle that way, or the center, if even possible. That way all the arrow fire hits other people first. Okay. Oh, hang on. So don't look at the stream. <laughs> um, there we go. All right. I got 40 feet of movement, so I usually hide. I usually take the rear guards because I can move to the front pretty quick. Oops. Darn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did you see what comic relief really broke? <laughs> There's probably something about you. Uh... Ring of DM control. Yeah, and that's separate. That That's the difference between you and me, comic. I would never be so foolish as to give something like that out. All right. You guys find yourselves coming into a very large open chamber. And I'll let you rearrange your marching order accordingly. So... Here's, as an aside from this ring of DM control, DM trick. If you're going to give someone that, make sure it's cursed because, the, you know, you can they can use it once, but once they use it, they become the DM. <gasps> no, I'd never do that. <clears throat> ask ask, uh, ask uh, Miss Yagra about the cursed sword she picked up. <laughs> In... It was shiny. Check out bonus D and D night for more information. Anyway, hey, perfect cure for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get away so easy the next time. All right, so either rearrange yourself uh, accordingly or such. I like where I am. Okay, Jerry Calliope, you're good. Yeah. All right. So. Beavis, you're kind of taking point there, and you look out into this big room. Wait, how is it light? Uh, no, complete darkness. And le- so Jerry, uh, I'm assuming Jerry's got light on a shield or something. Yeah, I actually have a the daylight spell as well if I need to. Okay. Uh, you could also ride the giant goat too if you wanted. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, that's mostly what I've been doing. Oh, yeah. Where's Goofy Grognard? Hold on. Under the guise of it's maybe better not to know what I'm not seeing. And, of course, I have Dawnbringer. That's true, too. Yeah, we. I think I might have something, too, although I need to look at my... Um, Can I roll for Grognard hit points ever? He's a summoned creature. They only have standard hit points. You're You're not like a summoner class or something like that that would... No, but it says hit points. 3d10 plus 3. Yeah, 19 is average. Yeah, I was hoping to get, you know, a little bit higher than that. <laughs> if I roll, which would probably give me a lot worse. But Yeah, you know. I would definitely give you a lot worse. All right, so actually with this thinner, with these, this, oops, uh, with these thinner hallways, Grogner's probably going to have to, like, walk in the back here because he takes up such a big space. He's a big freaking goat. Um, as he likes it when I scratch him under his chin. <sighs> Actually, that's like, like a, you have to either have it out or or not out, right? It's like it takes forever to summon. Uh, yeah, it's well, I don't remember the casting time. Yeah, it's not like a familiar. It's either there or you have to cast a spell again to bring it back. Yeah, it's like a you, permanent mount. And you guys have had time. Um, and as the owner of a goat, they like the top of the head, not the under the chin. Um, Beavis, as you glance out into this open chamber, you see a body, like, right at the edge of your, you have 60 feet, right? Yeah. So almost, cool, almost to the edge of your um, vision, and it does look like a, oh, uh, you know what, hold on, I got a better token than that. Uh, Give me one second. 
While there's a break while you're looking for tokens, I'd like to point out that I can't reach the top of his head. <laughs> All right. There we go. So there is a deep gnome body face down in the middle of that chamber. So is it on fire? Does it have a sword sticking out of its face? Nope. Doesn't appear to be moving at all. You didn't really answer the question. Uh, we didn't want to know if he was moving. We want to know if he's on fire or has a sword sticking out of his face. Uh, none of the above. Okay. Well, I, I, you know, motion everyone, give him the hand sign that there's a dead deep gnome. And then I'm going to come up around the corner and look around. Okay. Um, what's everybody else doing? Hello? I'm thinking. Oh, is that what that noise was? Oh, oh do we have something? <laughs> Smoke? What's I mean, that? I also had a bunch of crunchy food in my mouth, so oh, try okay. not to do that. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to move up to the front. Okay. So I do have two water skins, uh, about eight pounds worth. I don't know if that, how much that could even help, but. There's not really a fire. Utini was thinking this is what you get for going AFK. Eldeth, what are you doing? You going to hold back? Um, I'll just kind of move up to here. Okay. Calliope, Jerry? Do we see any more of this room? Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. Give, give it to you in a second. Okay. I'll just move up and like, hang out <clears throat> here in the back. All right, so... Uh, so you get... Can I, like, peek around the corner? Yep, yep. Okay. So you get almost the entire cavern. Um, so you kind of go left-righty. Like about like that. And um, I'm going to clear the chat here. Oop. Oh, I hate it when it does that. I got to actually have a, a clear line to do a, a thing there. And then uh, I want everybody to give me a perception check in the tower. Um, what am I forgetting here? Oh, here it is. Do, do, do. Oh, and by the way, for the people who can see it on the stream, um, see this guy got a cool add on, um, from some of the guys in the fancy grounds community that has like attack of opportunity, critical cover, max half damage buttons. I was going to ask you about that. Mm -hmm. cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, it was It's actually a free download on DMs Guild, but if you want to, you can uh, contribute a dollar or so to the uh, thing. Uh, I was trying to figure out what the opportunity thing is going to do. Attack of opportunity. Like, right, but... It just it just marks it as such in the chat. I mean, sometimes... Oh, the, okay. You, you know, sometimes guys will... Are, I mean, when you're doing a certain thing a certain way and you want to know, you know, what type of an attack something was or whatever... Uh, Why did that guy take an attack out of turn? Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, all right, here we go. <clears throat> do, do, do. Wow, that was horrible. Where was... Jerry, you got it. Why is your wisdom... Why is your perception check so horrible? Well, is he I, I'm not... In it? No, I'm not proficient. I just rolled a d20. Um, yeah, but hold on. Yeah, the last time I checked, perception was a wisdom charisma. Base still. No, it's charisma, and it's a zero. Zero modifier, so Why just a straight d20. <laughs> no, it's a wisdom. No, it's a wisdom, Jerry. <laughs> perception? 
Yes. Well, why oh, does it say Cruise Bomb Machine? It must have got changed at some point accidentally. Well, that'll change things. <laughs> you might want to go down the list here and double check that all. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I I'm guess like, so, right. I'm like, Jerry, you're a cleric. Why is your perception so horrible? So that would have been a 12. <laughs> okay, well, you're still the only one that failed. All right, well, the ones I actually even proficient in, I think are okay. Okay. So, um, uh, Beavis, you notice that there's been some passage through this area recently. Okay. Okay. No more detail. Number no, of no more creatures, de- type of creatures. Uh, not that. Uh, more than a couple. Uh, but beyond that, you're not sure. And how recent? Like, um, probably within days? the last few days. Okay, so. I mean, being a yeah, being mm-hmm. being under dark, uh, be even in a cave. Um, I don't know if anybody here has done any cave splunking. I, I yes. think I've actually been in a couple of different caves unintentionally. Systems. Would somebody tie you up in one or something? Uh, the short story is we were we went to. A oh, that's right. You, yeah, was you, supposed to be a yeah. an elevator down, an elevator up. We ended up spelunking with a paint can and a candle. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. You told <laughs> you told that story the other day. Um, uh, uh, there, there's actually dust that will drop down from a ceiling every so often. So you could you could kind of tell like like if something had its tracks covered or whatnot. Um, you would estimate that there these are more recent since they do not appear to be very very much obscured by falling rocks or dust or whatever. Yep. Well, not a whole lot of information. So yeah, I'm gonna continue walking in. Okay. Take a step around, you know, shield up, sword ready. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna mirror him on the other side. Okay, uh what about the other three of you? I'm going to move forward up here. I'm assuming that I have some experience with uh, with gnomes. I'm sure. I should move a little farther into the room. Sure. You've you've met gnomes some, some before. Yep. I'm just going like, to try to hang behind all this. I actually know gnomish, so I'm going to step forward. Okay. Can well, you speak in gnomish like <clears throat> greetings? Okay. Oh, he's dead. So. <clears throat> all right. Dead? So... From the from the previous perception roll, I'm still going to count that. Um, Jerry, you are the only one that, unfortunately, and it's probably a side effect of you not having um, dark vision. Um, but jumping out from, I'm just going to turn this mask off. Oops, oh, that was the wrong button. There we go. You see a bunch of deep gnomes jumping out from their cover. Unfortunately, even though they have advantage on their roll, I rolled horribly. Those don't look like deep gnomes. And... They also don't look like deep gnomes exactly. You can tell they're deep gnomes, but they also look like were rats. Were deep gnomes. Were deep gnomes. Roll for initiative. <gasps> yep. And wow. uh, roll for uh, Grognard. Do you know how? It's on. It should be on the sheet, right? Oh, I guess it's not. Um, I'll roll for him. Hold on. Uh, he's got a 13. There we go. All right. And round one, top of the order, Eldeth. So there was no surprise here, like, oh, except for okay. Jerry, except for Jerry this first round. So this one ahead of us is dead, correct? He's not moving. He's not moving. Oh. And, but he was dead. And the were rats, do they look aggressive? They're coming for you. They're, uh, 
Um, they have, um, let's see. Um, some of them have, you can see that they have cross hand crossbows at their sides. You can see some of them have war picks. Uh, you can see some of them, um, uh, yeah, war pick because they actually get, uh, two attacks. Okay. Uh, well, if they're attacking us, then I will attack them back. Okay. And I'm just going to move through Beavis here. Alrighty. And I'm going to attack number six with Dawnbringer. Does anything happen when I pull her out? The Dawnbringer? Yep. It goes... When she brings open all that light in their eyes. Um, let me see here. Uh, so it's luminous bright light. Well, it makes it does a 15 foot radius of light. You can make it go out to 30. Um, these guys do not have, they're not like drow where they give a disadvantage or whatever in sunlight. Okay. Then so, I will so I mean, they may, they may flinch for a moment, but um, that's about it. Uh, that'll be a hit. Awesome. Now, I don't remember what my crit range is. I think it's still 20. It's still 20. Okay. <clears throat> well, that depends on what your specialty, your fighter specialty was. Yeah, it's not based on your weapon anymore. It's it's based on on you. That that is one thing they changed in fifth edition. I think you created a nineteen, right? That's yeah. Enough. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if she took that. Uh, let me look here. So, oh yeah, improved critical. Hold on. Yeah, I do. Yep. yep. Okay, so we need to change that on your sheet. Hold on a second. So there is a spot on your actions tab. Somewhere here it is. It's the magnifying Under, glass for weapons. Weapons, yep. And then you can still just click on that critical button. The, and that, the hey, bottom. there we go. If you click on that critical button and roll damage, it should roll critical damage. Yep. Where's the critical button? About next on the bottom. We were just talking about it. Below the chat window. Bottom, all those little special options. Bottom left. Critical. Got it. It didn't work. Or did it? it? There's an extra die in there. Oh, it did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there is. Got it. Yep. All right. Oh, it's a one though. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. All right. Um, is that all you got? Yes. Okay. Beavis. I can attack that guy, right? He's like, there's no cover or anything, right? No. You, you, you're looking to attack that one right there? Yeah. Number two? Yep. Go ahead. Although I really should move over and protect L Death. Move. Get it. That's an AOO. Okay. All right. Um hang on. I gotta get there. Swipes at you with the war pick and lands a hit. Cheats. For four piercing. Continue. Okay. And now I'm going to attack with Acris. Okay. Is he a fiend or undead? Nope. Okay, so but a 19 still does hit. Snivelvin where at? Correct. Yeah, what do these guys got for AC? Okay. And I will on the back swing at the same guy. Natty 20. That would be a, that would be a critical. Yep. Nice. Your your brave dwarf runs up to defend you and and slashes his throat wide open. All right. <laughs> Double crit. <laughs> yep. All right. And you guys look at each other. Uh, okay. Um, Clyde, are you done? Beavis? Uh, actually, no. I, actually, I could, I could move, keep moving. I will. Can you, can you move that dead body? Um, stand on it. Nope. Not until next round. 
Okay, and then I'm done. Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. Calliope, you are up. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I am going to cast Scorching Ray at Sever Neblin Were Rat number two. Okay. Yeah, you get him just you, around you the corner there. Do get more than one ray. Uh, that was not a roll. Oh, look, unless it hits. It uh, that that to- does hit. That does hit. I'm starting to just move myself up so I would, you know, get a better. No, you uh, can shoot him. You can shoot him from there, but you can move too. Okay. okay. That is a hit. This is my first ray. Uh, I can't remember how many I get. Uh, three. 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 I'm going to throw all three at him. Okay. Why not? Pew, pew, uh, pew. Do, I, do I cast every time or just do the damage? Yeah, no, do the attack and then the damage. Just do them like one after. That is it. And one more. Also a hit. I'm really helping. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, a lot. All right, are you done? I'm done. Grognard's turn. What do you have him, him do? Yeah, he's just going to run up there and... Run up where? Butt. Right there. And he's going to butt that guy. Well, he'll run straight ahead and then kick backwards with his hoof. Is sure. trying to kill steal me? He is totally trying to kill steal you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Natty won! Oh, oh, what I would what it would have been awesome if it was like you hit it a po- you hit it a friend. I would have said he ran up and head butted Calliope. All right, would have been the most useful thing he's done all all session. <laughs> here we go. All right, it, hey, we got to get at least one shot. We've been here for two and a half hours. I don't think either one of us <laughs> get a shot at each other. So. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do some wear at damage here. Uh, Cross hand crossbow at Jerry the cleric a natty one, which is a miss. Um, and if I use the hand crossbow, I only get one attack. Um, all right, so let's see. Next one, that one. He's gonna step up here. He is going to. You know what? I'm gonna move this over just a little so I can get the combat tracker closer. Uh. Oh, come on. Oh. Bear with me here, folks, while I do some rearranging. There we go. That's a lot better. Uh, Okay, so war pick on Beavis. And that's a miss, but then he also gets the bite attack. Now, who? which one is doing this? Uh, Number 10. And that's a miss as well. The one that's uh, farthest away from you. Okay. All right. Uh, now, the one that's on you directly. War pick. Uh, it's a miss. And now the all important bite. And that's a miss. Come on. What's going on here? I'm falling apart. Now this one, oh. I'm not even gonna bother. I mean, they're just wear rats. I oh mean, my! Not, oh, fifteen's not a hit. I was gonna say, why is a fifteen a hit? He attacked himself, so he did. Yeah, attack oh. at wear rat. Okay. All right, hang on. Oh no, fifteen's a miss. I rolled it on myself. Wrong. Doesn't person. matter. Uh, I missed you, you big baby. All right. Hey, I don't want to get infected and turned into a, a right. were rat again. I did. <laughs> I don't know. It could be an improvement on your uh, physique. He has a different game. Five. It would ten, definitely ten, not be an improvement. All right. Uh, which one is that? Oh, he's on his turn. He dies. Blah. Now you can move into that square. All right. Uh, five. 10, 15, 20, 25. And, oh, that one. Uh, Hand crossbow attack at Calliope. Ooh, that's going to be a dirty dirty 20, which is a hit. And, And five points of damage. 
It's Calliope. Oh, come on, you just got 24 hit points. He just broke my ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. And last one. Five, ten. How many hit points do you have now? More than me, probably. Me? Yeah. I'm up to 60. Oh, yeah, that's more. Wow. <laughs> nice. You see, Cli- Clipe, you got quite a bit more buff. All right. Jerry, you're up. Oh, you're surprised this round. Sorry, Jerry. Utini. Oh, boy. Let's kill some stuff. They're rushing you. <laughs> oh, no. No, my D- my DM. I'm rushing them. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to rage. I don't know why I does not check that off, but whatever. Um, let's I've been see. playing around with the programming a little bit because I've been doing the development for Fantasy Grounds. Um, mm-hmm. we, I sh- we should talk because I've learned a couple of tricks. <clears throat> um, I'm going to move here. Uh, I think I'm just going to attack normally. And let's see. Is it going to kill him? Nope. Oh, so sad. All right. Well, this will probably kill him if it hits. It did. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. But. Uh, And I'm done. Okay. Uh, that was the end of round one. Top of the order, round two. L death. Okay, I'm. Oh going wait, to... before oh. she, I, bookkeeping note: that was Utini's fiftieth kill. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, oh, damn it! I've been I freak, I've been forgetting to keep track. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a... L death, you're up. <clears throat> Congratulations, Utini. We're at two. <laughs> Well, that's a miss. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. And yes, I'm done. All right. Beavis. I will uh, swing Acris at uh, number two. And an 18 to hit. And here's some damage. And he's dying. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to follow up to the 10. 21 to hit. And only 10 damage. Was, or 11 damage. That was not good. All right. You done? And uh, yeah, that's my two attacks. All right. Clippy. I'm going to move up here a little bit just so I don't accidentally hit Beavis or Eldeth. I am going to again Thank use you. my scorching ray on. Can I fire past number three at number two, or wait, number ten? Um, no, I'm going to say no. Unless you want to take a like two more steps this way. Sure. Okay. First scorching ray. Three damage. I'm helping. <laughs> Second scorching ray. Big money. Big money. Ooh, he's getting hurt. This is so exciting. Okay. <laughs> Last scorching ray. Oh, I didn't. Must not have dragged it onto him. That's yeah. It's... There we go. Oh, I was I was hoping for a kill. That's my turn. I really wanted a Grognard. kill. Grognard. Grognard, don't kill still me. Fine. Uh let me just do it. Uh, no, somebody's gonna kill still me before my turn, so go ahead. But I'll be sad. Come on, what's Grognard doing? He's just he's just running over there and he's going to take a swing. At which one? Oh wait, no, he can't get around the corner. He's just gonna 
charge that guy right there. Um, and since he whoa 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Hmm? how how far did he just move? Oh, he's got forty foot movement. Um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all, right, all right, all right, all right. Barely makes it, but he moved uh, twenty feet. So that means, and he, and he hits with a ram attack. He takes an extra two d four bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, and he, he must make it. Is this, he has to his, hit first. Are his attacks considered magical? I don't know. He's considered a fey creature, so I don't know if his attacks are considered magical. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning that direction. Yeah, we'll look it up later. So he'll just gonna attack him anyways. Okay. Any any hit. But he's probably going to take, t- take no damage? Correct. Okay, so that means he still has to make a DC 13 strength saving throw. I could, I'll drop it on him, right? Okay. Oh, wait, no. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you could do it. Yeah, see. make the roll. Okay. Hang on. Uh, what, strength, you said? Uh-huh. Natural one. So he gets knocked, knocked down. Okay. And extra attacks don't matter or anything. Nope. No extra damage matters. Nope. So, uh, yeah, he's done. Okay. All right. Well, that was a good play because those two were going to gang up on Calliope if you wouldn't have gotten their way. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, Grognard War Pick hit damage. And he also gets a bite attack. Ooh, I'm going to laugh if your goat turns into a were-rat. A were-goat. All right. Uh, it's four points. It has no hit points. Uh, not made for combat. Well, and you sent him into combat, though. Uh, where is the um, thing about lycanthropy? Uh, ba 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 I think you would. You think I would know this after we did it in our other game. Um, okay. Ba, ba, ba. I'm pretty sure it's not going to affect him, but I'm looking. Oh, here it is. Uh, proficiency bonus. Oh, really? I wow! I did not know that. Okay, so. Uh, there'd be two plus. Actually, it's it's celestial, not fey. Hmm. Yeah, but I'm not sure if its attacks are considered magical, though. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm I'm still reading. Okay, but right now, uh, so con modifier to so it's a DC twelve lycanthropy saving throw. Uh, so it'd be Constitution. It's a Constitution saving throw. Just made it. All right. Um, Why does it say his name is Gognard? We were just talking about that. All right. So that's that where we're at. Um, those guys are just going to wail on you. That's all they can really do. Um, actually, uh, we're at number 10, cast a spell on himself. Is that provoke an attack of opportunity? I don't think no. so. Okay. Wrong game. <laughs> yeah, not in fifth edition. <laughs> fifth edition, I think the only attack of opportunity you can create is if you willfully move outside a threatened area. Okay. I've been playing a lot of Pathfinder lately, so um all right. Uh this guy, he will this guy will wail on you. Uh Natty One, automatic miss. Uh oh, fumble effect. You are dazed until your next turn. Oh, goody. Uh, where's my... You can't use the effect stuff. Yeah, I am. I gotta get okay. it here. Uh, Dazed is not on here. Uh, uh, oh, you it, know what? That's because it's, it's part of my 4th edition thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just say just his attack is screwed up. Alright, um, I gotta turn that off. 
Uh, Utini, uh, make a uh, saving throw versus Constitution. <laughs> Says the man who could roll a one. Okay. Um, make an, okay, so that was his. He cast some spell you didn't work. Uh, do it again. We're at number five. Same thing. Ooh. Okay. And that where we're at is dead. That one is going to wail on Grognard. And that's a hit. And bleh. bye bye, go. Yeah. He's not dead. He just went to a better place. <laughs> he just went to a better place. He'll come back. Yeah, you're gonna back. take. You're gonna rip him out of. Mm-hmm. All right, and then it, uh, we're at number nine. Uh, make another save, Utini. Jerry, you're up. All right, so I am going to yell and run as fast as my legs can carry me to the two people who can possibly save my life. <laughs> then I'm going to... <coughs> With those younger legs, you know that knee problem is gone now, Jerry. Nice. <laughs> Uh, I am going to cast. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I am going to do Sacred Flame on we're at 10. Okay. Uh, before You're you... going to kill, kill me. Hold really? on. Hold on. Before you do that, Jerry, I do need to look at something here. Uh... Yeah, I suppose that's a spell. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, he failed. He's dead. He had one hit point left. All right, and then I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself as a bonus action. Okay. All right. Uh, he could, yeah, okay. <laughs> Darn it. Utini. He, the, he, those three, those three were-rats tried to do a spell on you. It, it failed, all three of them failed miserably, and then they all look at each other and then look at you and think that that was a really dumb idea. <laughs> Um, would have been great if it worked, though. Eh, well, you know. No, it would have. Trust me. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm uh, gonna attack number four. I have some damage. Number four, attack him again. Excellent. And since he's dead, I'm going to move down to here and then attack number five with my bonus action. Uh, hit. Come on, big money. That was not very big money. Yeah, 20. It's okay. Uh, cool. And then I'll end my turn. All right. Um, hang on just one second. I just want to look at something here. Okay. All right. And that was the bottom of the round. Top of the order, Eldeth. Okay. I'm going to move here to the other side of Beavis. And I'm going to attack this were rat. And that's it. All right. Beavis. I will uh, uh, hack its head off. You're going to attack it. No, I'm hacking its head off. I called it ahead of time. And that's a hit. And that's... Okay, so I I hacked... Part of its head. It's going to take a couple of swings. Okay, it'll take a couple of swings. And the 28's a hit. And now he's dying. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to move. Okay. Boop. 
All right. Clippy. Oh, Venus just like moved right into my path, so I'm going to move to here and I am going to do the old scorching ray at the Verf Nibblin. We're at number one. Okay. Aren't you glad we suggested that spell? Yes. <laughs> You're getting a lot of a lot of mileage out of that. Um, that, was, that was the wrong one. Yeah. I'm going to cast Scorching Ray, not Vicious Mockery. Oh. That's a hit. They have terrible armor. There's class. Ray number one. Ray number two. Mm-hmm. And the last and final, come on, big money. Really, really big money. I don't have a prayer at taking them out, do I? Um, not sure. Go ahead. No. Okay. That's close. Damn it. I just roll. want to kill one thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she's got some constitution, a new spell, and suddenly she thinks she can she's, kill She's things. invincible. Right, right. He's lucky Grognard saved her ass. All right. Um... On their initiative, they throw down their weapons and they get down on their knees and put their hands up. We give up. We give up. Don't don't kill us. And you guys suddenly hear a voice from the center of the chamber. And it, the, the body that was laying there, the head kind of comes up and says, don't, don't kill them. We, we need the were rats if we're going to defeat the pudding king. The pudding. I like pudding. And that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. Hooray! We, we don't get any pudding. <laughs> no. Can we get some XP? Uh, and as that battle ends. You're all seventh level. Yay! Dude. Oh, yeah. Advantage on initiative. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait to see what I get. Holy cow. All right. Well, that's it tonight, guys. Uh, thank you uh, for watching D&D Night on DDO Stream. Uh, check out TV or twitch.tv slash DDO Stream for the official DDO Stream calendar and to find out about our other D&D Night groups, as well as the rest of our DDO streamers. Also, don't forget to check out our sponsor, Fantasy Grounds, at fantasygrounds.com to see how you can get started with your virtual tabletop gaming experience today. Uh, you can follow uh, DDO at, on Twitter, at DDO Unlimited. You can follow Fantasy Grounds at Fantasy Grounds 2. You can follow me on Twitter at Evil Beaker. And you can also follow me on my new Instagram account ooh, at Evil Beaker Gaming. Uh, Patrick? Uh, Diocast.com for our news and discussion podcast. Uh, we have a show most weekends, and we also stream playing DDO most Wednesdays. Uh, yeah, at Diocast on Twitter. And I do some stuff here too. <laughs> yep. Uh, even. Uh, Twitter is at even note here on Twitch is twitch.tv slash kobold even where we stream kobold kindergarten the second and fourth Wednesdays each month at 9 p.m. Eastern. If you like watching D and D and fantasy grounds, that's what we're doing. Except we're very very rules light. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, uh, Jerry, why don't you take us out? Yeah, so normally this channel streams DDO, Dungeons and Dragons Online, the MMO. You can find out more at DDO.com. Get a free account and don't even need a credit card. If you want to follow my personal retro channel, that's twitch.tv slash mockduck. I'm going to be doing some spooky stuff, FMV style of gaming here probably in October. So if, if you're into that, maybe check it out. All right. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And please... Check us out next week on D&D Night, uh, where some of us uh, that have been playing here tonight, we will be playing the brand new Wizards of the Coast adventure, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, and Alex is going to be uh, running that uh, on his first weekend of the month game. So check it out. Uh, I'll be playing. I know Beavis will be playing. We'll see if anybody else joins us. Uh, until I'm playing. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> and and Eldith will be playing somebody not named Eldith, hopefully. Um, that's it for tonight. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. everybody.